today's video, I'm going to show you how I design custom websites using Figma. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. Today is another episode of Wine and Design where I have myself a glass of wine and I talk about graphic design or website design or anything under the graphic design umbrella with you all. So I hope you guys go grab one of your favorite beverages whether that's coffee, tea, wine, whatever it is, or water, <laughs> go grab your favorite beverage because in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you behind the scenes of how I design custom websites using Figma. So if you've been to my channel before, you're probably wondering why the heck I'm using Figma instead of Adobe XD. So Adobe XD is my preferred platform and one of the platforms I use all the time for website mockups. However, I've kind of been dabbling a little more in Figma because it's really great for collaborations with other team members, which I've been working with a lot of other people. And also I just find that it's much faster um, when I'm designing on that than Adobe XD is. I don't know why that is, but I've just been finding that the browser and opening up on all my different desktop, laptop, wherever it is, is so much quicker than having to go open up a new file and editing it that way. Also, I do, since I am working with other team members, it's so easy to just add them as an editor for them to go in and start doing that. I've run into quite a few issues when I try and add someone to the file on Adobe XD. Don't know why that is, but I just find that Figma has been quite easier in terms of the collaboration. So that's why I've been using it. I don't know if I'm fully gonna start using that over Adobe XD, but I'm really enjoying it right now. So I'm kind of just going with it. But I did want to show you guys in this video a little more behind the scenes of how to design websites on Figma and some of the things I've been learning. So I did make a video a few, probably a couple months ago now, comparing Adobe XD and Figma. So I'll leave that linked up above so you can kind of see my initial impressions of Figma and that kind of help, that might help you decide on which one you want to start learning first. I personally like to kind of know all my options out there and learn all of them and then make my decision on which one I'm gonna move forward with. So that's kind of why I'm using it in this video. So I'm super excited to show you guys though how I design the homepage for this website design client. This is a really fun project. It's for a hair salon in Toronto that will be opening like sooner than later. So I'm very excited to be part of not only the branding, but the website and my really good friend that I met through TikTok. She's my online friend. We actually connected and we've been collaborating on projects just like this one. So we are collaborating on this. I am just doing the design portion and she is going to be doing the development on Show It. So that's where we're going to be building it. That's and then having that in mind, knowing that we're going to be building on a show it does help me with the actual design portion because I know what's possible because show it really has so much customization options. So that kind of helps me um, when I'm coming up with the different sections of what I want to do. So I'm going to be showing you guys kind of just like walking you through how I designed this, showing you behind the scenes of it. And hopefully that kind of gives you some more insight into Figma and how you can use that for website designs. One thing I will say, and I think this was in my first impression video, Figma is all about layers. There's lots of layers. You can see all your layers on the side. And I think that's kind of nice because it really resembles like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. But one of my weaknesses is organizing my layers. And I really noticed that when I was on Figma because when I'm collaborating with people and when you start to grow, this is just a really good life lesson for those who are growing and plan to evolve. Being organized is so important because when I have team members or people working with me, if they can't figure out what I'm doing because of my disorganization, then I'm clearly doing something wrong. So I'm really trying to get better about organizing my layers on all of my um, apps, whether that's Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever it is, having my layers organized is so helpful. So that's something that You'll probably notice in the video, I'm not the best at, so don't come at me, I'm trying to work on it. Um, but it's definitely really important to keep in mind, especially if you're using Figma, um, that you can kind of put them in sections and layer them and it really helps for organization. So one other thing I wanted to mention real quick is Figma does have a really awesome feature where you can turn on a development mode, 
which actually turns all of your sections into code. So if you do feel that's something you want to learn, it might be a really good idea to start learning Figma because it does offer that. I think Adobe XD has, it does have a um, development version of it, but nothing compared to what I've seen on Figma. So definitely play around with that as well, if that's something you're interested in. But enough said, let's hop on over to my computer screen and I'll show you guys behind the scenes of this website design. Hey guys, the project brief for this website is at their hair salon in Canada. We wanna use a lot of warm and neutral colors from the color palette, implementing shapes as arches, since that's what's going to be in the salon. Then we're also gonna to wanna to show client examples of the hair. So this is kind of what I'm gonna be paying attention to as I'm designing and we're definitely gonna wanna make sure to make it warm, inviting, and really friendly. All right, you guys, so the first thing I'm doing is just opening up a new blank page, and it's kinda nice because Figma does come with quite a few different prototype options. I just selected the desktop option for the sizing of my page, and the first thing that I'm going to do before I even start designing is setting up the design setting so i want to make sure that i have all of the fonts colors and everything and to get there you can just click into any empty space on the page there and i will be able to see um i was having trouble finding it at first but you'll be able to see the local styles that you can set up for this specific project so i'm just going to set up the files i'm going to do the fonts and there is a way to upload fonts to the Figma, but it's really nice because Figma just loads in the fonts that you have on your computer. So it kind of makes it easy and nice to not have to worry about like constantly uploading them to the actual application. So that is really nice. And um, I'm just double checking that I know which fonts I need. And the only bummer is if there is a font that you need to go download, you kind of have to restart the app, at least for me on, on when I was doing this, I would have needed to restart the app to see the font within there. So I'm going to come back to that and probably do that later because I don't want to have to restart my app right now. <laughs> uh, but that is kind of the only bummer I ran into. So I am just going to set up the colors. I um, do have the brand guide that I created for this client, so it's kind of nice. I already know everything that we need to do for the client. Um, so you can name the color and then you can put the hex code in there and just create those styles. So it's, it's really nice to have all of these in here before you even begin the design portion because it's going to save you so much time from having to do the code and, you know, enter the color in manually every single time you're designing a section. So. That is what I'm doing. Um, they have quite a few colors, so I just set all those up. And the nice thing about setting up the local font styles is you can set up the sizing, the kerning, the tracking, everything you want for every single style. So now I'm just naming um, that specific page that I have here. And um, I'm going to go back into the fonts and set up the body font. So the heading font is the one that I need to restart the app for. The body font, um, don't think that was loading either. So I'm probably going to come back to them um, and just double check that it's because I need to restart the application. So um, you'll kind of see me going back and forth in the dashboard and entering back in the design just to see if that'll load the fonts in for me. But you can go back here and open up your account and you should be able to see um, the fonts, the download installer. So the installer will allow you to connect the Figma to your, your font library on your computer. So if you are running into some font issues, that is a way to do it. Just go to the account settings and download the installer for the fonts and that should solve most of your problems. So now that I have all the local styles set up, I prefer to make my website starting with the header and footer. I kind of jumped when I was doing this design, I did the header and then I jumped into the middle sections, but I actually really enjoy doing the header first because um, it definitely just like gives you a good little base and starting point for the website. So that is what I'm working on, just getting the um, button set up, the navigation set up, and also this helps when I'm referencing which pages I'm designing and things. So that is what I did. And then I jump into the first section, which I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do for that yet. So you'll kind of see me playing around with some ideas. 
of maybe doing an arch right away or um, I didn't really love that. So I was thinking maybe a big image up front. So you'll see, I kind of, <laughs> I jumped ahead. I didn't record every single thing with this design, but I jumped ahead and this is the um, full size image that I chose for this website. And now I'm just making some different sections. I thought it'd be cool to show some featured in logos and um, things like that. So overall, designing on Figma is so similar to Adobe XD. I would say it's actually more similar to like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or even InDesign, just having those program like knowledge in the back of your head on how layers work and how shortcuts work and stuff. Those all really work similar similarly on Figma. So I definitely feel like it's more comparable to those applications. And I really do enjoy the layer side of Figma, but I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I'm not good at organizing it. And I'll show you near the end, I'm gonna start to like practice and learn how to organize it better. Um, but yeah, overall, this is just me kind of jumping into more of the design, adding some textures in the background, um, just making it look a little more um, artsy in a way and I'm bringing in those warm and neutral colors I mentioned in the beginning for the brief and I'm kind of just like playing around with maybe adding in a script font to kind of add some personality um, and I really don't like it like angled like that for this website I think it needs to be very like structured and clean looking I've been super into scrolling bars so you'll see me creating a scrolling bar there that we will have to develop um, on show it and I'm just continuing with the design, uh, making sure I'm adding in those arches to kind of bring it all together. And then I also created that before and after section that you can see above. And for show it, we're probably gonna need some sort of widget or custom code for that, but that should be pretty easy to put together. And now we have some popular services. I'm gonna do some testimonials at the bottom there. You'll see me do that later. Um, but overall, I like to make sure that my um, home pages of the site have a really eye-catching thing up top, something about the business below that, something about the services and how they can help you below that, client testimonials and reviews, and a little bit about you near the end, and then the footer. And that's kind of like the structure I like to follow. So that is kind of what I'm thinking of in the back of my mind when I'm creating this. And um, I did get that font in there once I closed the application, so you'll see me using that now. Um, but yeah, overall, this is just kind of how the design's coming along. All right, you guys, this is how the website looked after I finished creating the homepage. So I did make some adjustments to the front image here after talking with the girl I'm working with on this. We thought it'd be best to show example work right away. And also we're trying to use some pink accent. So her sweater was perfect for what we're trying to do. So this is the main image we chose. I'm thinking we might need something a little more high def but for now this works totally well and perfect love this little accent here to scroll and as we scroll we'll see the first section this is kind of like a little background piece to highlight important parts of the text love having a little pink touch in there as well and of course the submark logo we have a scrolling bar here to kind of add some movement to the website and then some more movement, we'll have a before and after slider. I'm hoping this works. I know that with Show It, it's a little bit different because there's no plugins you can add. Like you have to pay for a lot of the um, widgets and stuff like this. So kind of ran into that issue and we might have to end up paying for some widgets unless I want to like figure out the custom code. But this is how this looks and it can go to each stylist Instagram. And then scrolling down, we have a little section about the brand, about the blend. We kind of played on words and this is the owner of the salon. Um, and yeah, so we have a little section all about her and scrolling down. 
they have a popular services section. So this will scroll through the services and you can drag and pull it as well. And then we have a section that's all about testimonials, highlighting more of that important text. Then we have a um, section here all about the newsletter and then the footer. So I love how this came together. I think it's gonna look so pretty once it's all built out. Um, I'm gonna be designing the interior pages as well. So let me know if you wanna see that, but just wanted to show you the final product. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed seeing me turn a blank Figma page into a really nicely designed homepage on Figma. I had a lot of fun designing this one and I cannot wait to see it come to life through Show It. Um, I'll definitely try and develop some of the pages so I can show you guys behind the scenes of how you turn Figma into Show It. Uh, one other question I get all the time that I wanted to at answer in this video is why I design it before just, why don't I just design it on Show It? Like that seems like I'm doing an extra step. And I totally used to ask the same question when I would see other designers doing this. And one of the main reasons is because the editing and the collaboration you can have with your client on Figma or Adobe XD really helps nail down the user experience, the design, make sure you have all of that figured out before you go and create section after section on the website. So when you do start creating directly on the website, that's actually like caching a lot of things unless you purge your cache and make sure the website's not storing all of your history, but that can slow the website down if you have a million revisions. And also it can take a lot more time if you are you know, making a bunch of changes in the live version versus just dragging and dropping and changing something really quickly through a design. So it really actually saves me time in the end. I know it seems like a conundrum having that extra step, but it saves me time from having to redevelop every single page. Something I'm going to start implementing is actually having my clients sign off on the actual design of the website before I develop because I prefer to have all of those edits and revisions done before I go and work on making it live and possibly adding code and doing all those things that take a lot of time. So try it, maybe try it with a client or two and you'll notice that it's so much easier to nail down that design and the user experience doing the actual mock-up first. So wanted to answer that question. I get it all the time and I totally understand. I still sometimes ask myself that. I'm like, I could probably just jump into it, but I know that I will regret that later when the client maybe wants to the whole page redone. So definitely try that out. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing down below. And I'm going to go enjoy this glass of wine and I will talk to you guys in my next video.